Welcome back to another animation analysis, and today we're going to take a look at the full trailer of Disney Pixar's Lightyear. Let's go back to the beginning. There's actually a lot of footage that is from the first teaser as well. I'm not going to go over this. I can put up a card to the teaser to look at these shots. They're still cool, of course. This one's new. And the reason why I'm looking at this is because today is the first week of today. Or yesterday started the first week of the new academy semester. And this is a great moment to tell my students to look at trailers. Why? Because even on a shot like this, what do you notice? You have the hand here and you have the hand here. And that is for asymmetry. So right off the bat, something to learn. Even how he takes the helmet off, it's not up simple in one axis. There's a slight rotation in there. The slight roll over there. And then bringing it over slightly over there. And even here, it's not quite in the middle. This is still different. This might seem super simple. Michael, might go, really, really? But yes, it's something that we constantly talk about the students is asymmetry. You, you want to go away from, you know, in your Maya, if you animated Maya, all your channels being maybe only one channel has values and the rest are in zeros. Just think about the organic offsets and asymmetry in characters. This could be imposing and movement and so on. Then we get into this, which I thought that's already a great example. Also, just for myself, I love orange. <laughs> you got orange and tech. Oh, this goes back to the teaser there. Cool stuff in there. Cool new character. But it's the walk. So you have a walk that's interrupted or just kind of spiced up with a slight change in adjusting his clothes. That gives you that plus holding a prop. Again, gives you asymmetry. There's a change in posing. So it's not just the mirrored walks so even just that is going to help change your posing a little bit so for me that's what i'm going to focus on it's focusing on on every semester it's just making sure that your performances are fun and believable and have asymmetry just something that you add an extra thing this could be a prop like this or an adjustment to cloth or prop whatever you have to break up a movement and give this you know something else than just your default movement i do like also the contrast and timing if you look at his walk versus his bigger steps more confident and it's got this little beep 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 it's cute though like it always got your classic hand pose like that even he has something that he holds on to it's good stuff though that is the same again there are a lot of things that we can scrub or just keep playing that one definitely go into the teaser there's a lot of stuff going on in terms of body mechanics that are great same thing in all of these we talked about that before this is new this is the extension of the shot and this I like because of the contrast. This is a cool moment of you could show off body mechanics with different characters. Yes, it could just be one, right? But let's pretend you have multiple characters. You have different sizes and age and so on. And it's dynamic in terms of screen direction. It goes through the frame. And you have the lens, basically the lens, the characters running, and the main character, this guy here. So for me, it's a cool example of doing lip sync. That is this, right? He talks, but you got the contrast of Lots of movement and it's cut off, cropped here, going this way, while he is leaning the other way and being comparatively very still. I know he's moving, but compared to these, he's a lot more still. And it kind of stands out because it's just a swishing motion blur movement. But I think that's a cool shot as a student to do. You know, if you want to do a little bit of lip sync, nothing too crazy, it's just kind of there. And it serves as contrast with some mechanics you can do. But again, Nothing super crazy was you don't see the rest of the legs. You know what I mean? A lot of it's cut off, so you don't have to animate everything. I think that's pretty neat. And dare I say, I might steal this for a future shot. It's pretty cool. This, we talked about this before. This is another view, though, but I do like the interaction, the bumps in all of this. Same thing here. We saw that before. Someone, I'm sure, does like a uh, shot by shot comparison. Artifacts different. Was it re rendered? It's cool stuff, though. That's new. Even this, see what I love about this is the length of it here. Watch this. And done. But you have nice timing. Got a bit of weight and hop. You got your squash stretch. Nice clean silhouette in front of this. And then the hop down with some weight. So you got some drag overlap, boring, and bounciness that you could exaggerate in the shoulders and everything. If you do, you know, if you have it for your assignment where you want to really uh, accentuate body mechanics. And then a step down which you could technically prolong so that he does at the end uh, a weight shift right leaning over and then you could have something where you know whatever the pose is hey i'm done da, da, da. but that would be a really nice succession of 
movement there. You could start here, and this could be taking off something, you know, like, you know, or something like that. Which, of course, that's a pain in the butt to animate, tentacly stuff. I hate that stuff, but it's fun and it's rewarding when it works. But that's something else, and I'm, of course, I'm going to post this in my uh, students forum at the Academy. Where, you know, this is what I would recommend. Because they're going to do pantomime, they're going to do body mechanic stuff and lip sync. So again, this would be a great example. It's not too long. I love all this. What are we here? We are 20 seconds in. And there are so many examples already for students to work on. This is your inanimate object. <laughs> you could totally do that as well. Got this. Of course, I'm going to look at sets, vehicles, robots. That's cool. There's a creature coming. I just want to go frame through this, what this creature looks like. Oh, it takes it hard. Even that could be fun, though, to animate something where it's a flying creature. Because it's, it's such a big contrast, flying, doing something to an event, and then lifelessness or something happening and then it just drops for physics that could be something if it's not a creature class that i'm teaching but that could they could add something like that potentially to a broader human shot that was my human by the way <laughs> this i like this too just for myself i like the as always the robots but you can see how uneven this ground is so that to me is already ooh, that could be fun it's not super accentuated though like little bumps and stuff it's cool though i like this in terms of just the camera placement i like that we have it's foreground elements. He just looks cool. A little bit of imperfection in the camera. Just a little bit. And I love that. That lens. Not something I would do for me as a student. But it could be a cool setup. I like this as a composition as a whole. I think this could be neat too. You know, in a way, I take it back. What if you take this idea that your character is on something moving. And this is your shot as a student. It's basically a head turn. Maybe a bit longer, so you can do a head turn to look at something and then a change of emotions. Maybe this is, you know, he's not that used to seeing this, but it's a bigger, oh, wow, this is cool. So you have a nice, clean, basic pose with you know, a nice silhouette. You can work on your timing of a head turn, with, you know, with the rest of the body being influenced by that turn, and then a gear change. But the reason why I like this is because if you have a character on something like this, where it's maybe bumpy or it could be on a boat or whatever it is, you would have all of the animation, but animation layer on top of that with more wobble. Like if you look at him, there's not much going on. He has some keep alive because of the car stuff, but imagine you would push this. It would be much more rattly, more elbow movement here. He has a bit of up and down. You can even have something hanging. You could have whatever. You could add a hat with a little flower in there and that flower would be moving. Whatever you want to accentuate as a student there. But I think that could be kind of neat as a setup. Someone that is sitting on something that is already having, you know, all kinds of random movement, which the body then inherits. And that puts, you know, an extra layer on top of your performance. Again, not that long. Play this again, real time. Head turn, reaction, stop. Like that's how long I, I would have it. Robots. This goes again full on into I like this. I know it sounds silly, but... All those type of things, with those lights, the colors, all of that. That's <laughs> gets me almost more excited than, oh, than the rest of the animation. So cool though. I love all this. That's new too. This guy cracks me up. I like his little, ee, little face there. Of course, I got to look at all of this. To me, this is like the, the uh, scent of interest and all that. It's cool though. Actually, that, I take it back. Do you want, <laughs> there's another thing. Not huge, right? Because you don't have the legs. There's not like a lot of walking or weight shifting or anything. But again, you have an asymmetrical pose because you have this slightly to the side and it's taller. So one arm has to do more. You mean that that's already big asymmetrical pose. So that as a student, I would already recommend. And this is why I'm such a fan of props. Then you have an action. So this could be a pull. Now this could be whatever you want to do. This could be a pull and then give back or something pull and then break. This could be a lot heavier and, and you know much more difficult to pull so you can already decide how much weight and force you want to add to your animation there then what i like is actually this so something happens after you pull but instead of this which is very minimal here let's go back here as an animation student you would then have a much bigger reaction this could be something that's really blinding really hot maybe it turns really cold or this opens this a lot of wind and you know maybe struggles to hold on there's a lot more you can do but again look at the length of the shot 
two reaction stop. Like this is how long I'll probably do it. There's a lot you can do. Again, you don't show any of this. It's all in here, but it's physical reaction with a nice offset pose. And you can show something where a character that has done something is reacting to that event. I think that would be great to animate as a student. We saw that before. I do like stuff like that. Look at that. That's cool. <laughs> and this actually, this goes into another animation analysis I did where you have an action that's getting repeated. Right? So you have this is version one. So this is how this creature affects this character. This is how that character would be animated. And then you can go to the same. And how is this character animated? It's fairly similar, but as a an exercise, this would be, again, as a student, very interesting to compare these two shots and what are the differences. And again, take notes, how many frames for what and so on. I like that there's a little bit of reaction there. I'm most cool looking at this here. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> That's cool. Hold on. There's a lot of succession here, short shots. We've seen them in some form or the other. I still like them a lot, though. This is really cool. Look at that frame. Yeah, still love it. That's all cool. Then we have a bit of a change. That one's a new one. It's just your walk. Yeah, I mean, you could do that as a student as well in terms of the really nice framing for silhouette. And you have to go into super detail because it's fairly far away. I want to see this though. That's what I want to frame through. Cool. I always like when you have environment, you know, pieces and elements that kind of point, you know, all those little elements point and frame the shot. Give it again some layers that just empty. You have foreground, mid-ground, backgrounds. These are cool. That's cool too. I like seeing this. This is fun too. And this goes back into prop handling. You can actually really like the texturing in the surface there. See, it's kind of hard. And, you know, I've unboxed enough stuff to know how this feels. It's really neat. I love all that here. But it's it's a cat. You know, you expect the cat to be somewhat soft. You know, they're not, they're very, they can't, I mean, depending on the cat, you would feel the muscles and all that good stuff, the bones. But the handling of this is different because it's, you know, such a hard surface robot type of thing. And I like the idea of having something visually that you know what it is and potentially how it feels, but then because it's made out of something else, there's just that that totally the contrast of how someone would handle it, how it would move and, and the weight of it compared to just the quick imagery of, oh, it's a cat, but not really. Hope that makes sense. But I like that idea as as a prop. That could be something interesting to uh, to film as well, to film, to animate. Wow, this film reference. Again, you can see here, that's why I like it too, just the ventriloquist type of thing of robotic thing how it moves different shot here you can see the beginning of all of that we saw that in the previous yeah yeah previous teaser so cute that's probably the first thing of like okay i want i need to analyze this frame my friend because that's such a cute walk look at this beep, 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 beep. oh so cute but the cool thing too is that i mean there is right a little bit of stretching squashing but it still has to function as a straight leg there's not I don't see any bending. I mean, I guess there's some bending here. Maybe it can. Can it? How much is it doing? It's fairly stiff-legged. And that's the fun challenge of animating something where you can't have bendy legs. I really like this. Though. I like slight movement in here. And I love that little move up there. These are cool. I think we've seen this before to some degree. Cool ship, though. There's a really cool role of him afterwards. I love all this. Again, this is something where I feel like that's a cool shot to animate as a student. A bit more advanced, right? You got more advanced mechanics of run, stop, or it's like a run reaction, stop, turn, and then a quick dialogue line that's not too long, and then off in the other direction. So how long is this shot? Let's go back, let's go back, let's go back, and... Dun, dun, dun. It's not too bad. It's not super short, but not super long. That's another one I would highly recommend a student can do. You don't have to show the face. <laughs> it's already one, one thing you don't have to animate, right? You don't show much in terms of the legs or at all, but you have a nice opportunity to show weight in the body. You have some cool prop animation set design type of crashing thing. I would love to animate by hands. 
Then a reaction, right? So you got a one state of animation, some cool in-betweens, crazy stuff into... Actually, I'll do like this a lot. How he swings his arms and stays in that pose. Then nice head turn into another cool pose. Then as the camera gets a bit closer, now we can really focus on the facial stuff in combination with body movement, right? And you can see all the changes in the face, line of action, squash and stretch in the face, into the patient up and down and go into a sideways profile view of another run. Love all those glowy bits, especially here. But anyway, I think that's a cool idea for a shot. So what is this, like three, four ideas already? That could be really cool. Not too long for student assignment. Yeah, it's really neat. Cool to see. Zerk. Is that Zerk? Also love seeing variations of these. You know they're going to have fun making toys out of all that. But I love having different characters in these outfits. That's cool. Again, how long is this shot? Oh, so cool. All right. So why is this so cool? A, you have a backwards walk while doing something. So it's not going to be a backward cycle, right? It's something where the character is doing something and wants to go back because this is really imposing and it's dangerous. And you got that little contrast in the steps. It's not just a step, step or like one step back. It's this. Then a turn, 180 turn with a really nice silhouette and line of actions. Come on, into a run. Ignore this shot. Just this. On top of that, you have something huge made out of something else than a human in the suit. Heavy. And even this is different, where you have a step and it prepares to stomp. So maybe this stomp, you know, this would be a different action that you could combine within the shot so you don't just start something without a resolution. Here it's okay because it continues across the shot and finishes there. And again, I mean, you might be super ambitious and do a second shot. So you continue this across the cut. And I love this. This influences the environment, which changes this character's pose and body mechanics into something else. And in this case, it's a jump up fall, right? So the physics are different of just running is you have an upwards move with hang time and a drop. Super cool. So yeah, this could be neat as an assignment right there. Ambitious, do two shots with something else. It's cool. Got a dynamic camera in there. I love this though. I love this. That just that moment of going back and you can feel the harshness of the suit on this surface. Again, this is hard, right? This is not sand or snow or something. And this is hard in terms of the material and how it rolls. You can feel it. And I love how long he he stays there. Like, that could be a shock. Okay, hold on, hold on. See, that's another shock. How about from here? This, maybe a bit longer. So maybe you would have a bit of resolution of this look with a saddle or maybe trying to get up. But this would be your nicely complicated body mechanics of a roll. And again, what is the character made out of? Is it wearing something? Is the character soft and squishy? And what is it rolling on? All of that is going to change your animation. And then, with that moment of pause as the hang time, the roll hang time, as I would call it, I guess, right? Before you change direction, all that comes down so you can focus on the face to do something bigger here. I don't know. That to me sounds pretty cool. It's not too long. Complicated enough to learn something, and that's your next shot. Come on, students. It's great. <laughs> that's also great. Love all of this. All of that. Let's get across. Oh, see, that's the thing I wanted to frame on as well. It's like, how orange is this suit? It's not. It's more reddish. But I love it. I know. Let's take a break from animation for a moment and just appreciate this frame. <laughs> Come on. This ship, this environment, this suit. And then we got this guy going in here. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, ready? It's another shot. I know it's another shot in a trail. I'm just saying. As an exercise for students, you have a character looking at something. So not a lot of movements. All you do is you concentrate on one pose, right? Holding something, getting ready for something, holding something to analyze something, whatever you want to do. Nice, strong pose. And the character is looking. It means it's processing information. So you have one pose, no animation really, but you show thought process, right? Thinking. 
That in of itself for an assignment for a student is really important to be able to do, the character thinking. Then <laughs> you show mechanics. So this character, another character, whatever you want to do, comes in. Now look at what happens, how this, let's do some onion skinning here, bam, goes into that, right? You got a straight to a curve. You can also have the character lean in, observing something, right? So you got your C curve like that to ba -ba, reverse C curve like this due to an outside force. So that's a different kind of physics than a character leaning over, maybe falling asleep and falling. This is an outside force forcing, as I just said, that. And that's it. You know what I mean? There's not much you have to do with this. Just a couple different poses. Still have a nice silhouette here in the fingers. And then you've got to follow through in all of this. But you're showing off the change of, you know, more stern face or, or observing face to ba -ba, big change of facial expressions with body mechanics here. So what is this? Five, six shots, examples that you can do as a student. How long is this shot? Ready? <laughs> Look at it, super short. So I give this probably another second at the beginning to show the thought and then this and maybe add a couple of frames to this maybe. Just a bit, maybe not as fast to see this a bit more without blur. Totally works. Super short. This is nothing I would add to someone. I'm just curious to see. As you can see, more details on characters and suits. It's cool stuff. Lots of stuff here. That's definitely when you start framing through. What is that? Oh, really hurt? Or is that a hole in the thing? Nope. Just really hurt. It's cool though. And I mean, you could expand the shot. And again, imagine you're doing a run. So you have a run cycle that's already, you know, its own difficulty. Close up enough to see this while holding someone else who's also emoting. And you're going to have the wobble of the up and downs. Imagine this shot. Like you leave it this close. You don't change the camera. But you make it maybe three, four seconds long of a character running while holding something while this character is also aware of things. That's another cool shot. And I love, again, this is for me like the, the gear change type thing, assignment for students. Be awesome. This is cool. I want to look at this here. That's cool. That's a cool setup there. More runs, different characters, cool suits. Ooh. Cool stuff too. Zerk. Yeah. You know, that's going to be on a bunch of posters and screen grabs. Yeah, this was cool too. This is really short, but watch this. Ah, it's so short. But imagine, <laughs> here's another shot. A second longer, just so you can read this a bit longer. And then you got that, oh, that big stretch into just someone yelling something. And that's something else I tell my students that you don't have to select a shot that's 20 seconds long with a lot of lip sync. You can just do something like this. How long is this? Yeah, he just yells light years. Imagine a sound where maybe there's, you know, one or two words and then a character yells something. You can really practice exaggerated facial shapes in combination with a, you know, change and stretch and body language. But you can still do lip sync. I know that to me would be easier to go through because you, it's just not that long. You can still push things and learn stuff, but your shot is not overwhelmingly long. Also cool. Oh, that is cool. Oh, yeah, look at this. Cool, cool, cool. Love all of this. All you need here is uh, Inspector Gadget style cat. Oh, wait, there's a cat in this movie. <gasps> what if, uh, where's Jonesy? What if Jonesy here <laughs> is a villain and the cat will be here? What is it, Dr. Claw? <laughs> anyway. Let's look at this. I mean, that would be your shot as well, right? You have a human plus a creature. You got flight dynamics holding on to something. A little bit of dynamic camera and a struggle, right? You got a driver and someone's being driven. And then maybe that character is able to turn around and punches <laughs> this thing. So then that character becomes the driver and that one has to react. There's a lot you can do. It's very short though, but that'd be a cool idea too. Actually, I like that idea a lot. Somewhere must be a cool tentacle rig, and you do this as a shot. Be neat. That's cool. Very clean. I love all this. Cool. Ooh, that is neat. That was too fast. I didn't set it in, the, in my first viewing. Love this. Ooh. 
Very cool. Love all this. That's your classic uh, Buzz Lightyear tuck and roll jump thing here. Nice. You know, that's the other shot, right? A land. Because, you know, at one point you have to do a jump as a student. Now you got your landing, compression, but the added complexity is now a turnaround. And because you're landing this way, you're going to lean backwards and fall backwards in a way. So you got to continue with a couple steps there while doing something else. I love that we can still see his eyes, though. It's nicely framed, so we don't cover that. So that would be your assignment right there. Land, compression, turn around, and then whatever action you want to use. This could be something where the character is flailing, wide-eyed, and because something else is, you know, maybe coming into frame, all blurred out, but big, right? This could be a creature, so then maybe I would have him here and then the other thing here so that there's more balance. And over the course of the shot, this thing overtakes the frame, so the character is here, and the other one is overtaking the whole thing. Maybe even overlapping your main character. So it's all imposing and taking up the frame. Could be cool. It's another assignment idea. And then we're at the end <laughs> with this cat. There's some fun stuff in there. I'm going to scrub through. I love the end when it goes into the uh, white noise. Just having a little bit of wobble there. A little prop animation with a little bit of this here. And that's that. Yeah, it's cool. When is this coming out? June? May? June? June. June 22. A couple months off, but I am definitely looking forward to this. Anyway, I thought I'm only going to have a handful of shots to talk about because there's a lot of repeated shots in here. But no, this is what is this? 26 minutes. <laughs> there's always something. Again, proving my point that students watch trailers, look at shots, and then take something like that, analyze it frame by frame, look at the length of the shot, how could you emulate this? You know, and you can also completely copy this. Just don't put it on your reel, but as an assignment, because then you have your shot, and then you have a professional shot, then you can look at, okay, well, what am I missing? How, why is this so good? And so on and so on. Definitely use these as inspiration and as motivation to push yourself and try certain things. Like this to me is a cool shot idea. A character hanging on to something. So you got the gripping, you got the weight and pull that you can pull off in your animation timing that... Someone is being pulled, but holding on to this. So the strain on this. Then the letting go. So then this will suddenly shoot up a bit faster. And then the interaction of this and whatever is holding on to this character. This character flying. He's got flight dynamics. It might go a bit left and right. Plus some cool camera stuff. Come on. There I say. Someday in the future, you're going to see a shot like this. And that's going to be me copying this. <laughs> but it's cool. So yeah. Students, look at trailers so much harder than a movie and you will always find this is so cool you will always find a shot that serves as a springboard for ideas like i said i mean it's literally there's, what is this like seven eight i gotta count later but so many different shot ideas in this trailer alone that you can modify as an assignment super awesome so thanks everybody uh for working on this trailer on the movie for giving people so many ideas and inspiration i'm really looking forward to this movie and that's it from me yeah that's it if you're still watching after all this time Thank you. Maybe you liked it. You know, the pitch. What is the pitch at the end? Guess what? Like and subscribe. And I do have workshops. So if you want me to analyze things like this with your shot and help you to make your shots even better, you know what the pitch is. I got workshops and all that jazz. I'm going to leave it at that. So check it out. Check out my channel. And that's it. Thank you.